Hi, YouTube. I hope everybody's doing good. I had a kind of a big day yesterday. Um, it took me uh, literally three hours to pack up uh, my children's box that I'm going to send them. <laughs> so that's on its way today right now. So, yeah. Uh, Doug wanted to participate in that, too, and um, he he's mailing it as we speak. So, yeah. Or when you see this, he's on his way. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, I told him I want to pay a little more to get it there sooner. And I hope it will take, like, uh, less time than that freaking letter did. I mean, um, not all the way even across the United States because I'm in the middle of the dang thing up north on, the, you know, Midwest. Well, I'm even closer to west than then being, you know, even the next state east of me would be um, kind of southeast is Michigan because of the way Canada swoops down in, in, like that from us to there. Well, anyway, so, and then there's, uh, what is it, Michigan and Pennsylvania, um, you know, getting into the East Coast. So it's not even the whole United States. I'm kind of like in the middle top middle of the thing to even get over not even all the way to the west coast you know nine days are you kidding me <laughs> and then this one lady just with a letter she's like uh yeah i mail one like bills in town and it takes them three days to get to some place that where she's paying a bill in town in a tiny town of six six thousand people, you know, if even, maybe two thousand. No, there's six in the surrounding area at least. I'm thinking, but anyway, um, when we moved here, it was a little bit smaller. Well, Doug was here for five years before that, so I was in the vicinity, same area, kind of. Okay, well, anyway, um, so when that woman said that, and she's like, and it went up five cents too and I'm like yeah they want to charge for it for sure you know so <laughs> that's funny it was just kind of humorous there was this guy I consider him a kid but he's probably oh 40 something like um mid 40s you know somewhere in there maybe a little younger but he's in a store looking at um, them cheater glasses, uh, um, not prescription, but reading glasses. So, and he's standing there, almost said something to the cashier. He's standing there and he's looking at these glasses and he can't see, because I would have grabbed another pair of the same ones and be like, hmm, okay, them work. Let's try another one, you know, but, um, this is the same guy that would ride his uh, uh, crotch rocket, they call it, or his very fast street bike, racing bike, up and down our town. And he wore uh, oh, a human finger bone earring. I'm not kidding you. And uh, I even said something to him when he was a young man. So, But I, anyway, I found it quite humorous that the same guy um wasn't smart enough anyway to use the glasses that he was trying to see what they were you know use another pair to see what it was <laughs> they even sell magnifying glasses you know <laughs> in the same store <laughs> so i've got a couple of them around for tiny print what the heck you know but anyway I, I found that a little bit humorous. So. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, yesterday was quote, sort of busy and today um, not so much. So yeah, I thought last night, I thought, oh, I'm just going to relax. And um, yeah, because everything I packed, I wanted, you know, it had to go just so and everything had to be just right and you know i even put some uh 
well, for Easter, they're not, um, it's made out of paper, but they're little springy pieces of paper that look like grass, you know, that I stuffed in um, a tote bag for each kid and then a whole bunch of stuff in there. But And then I just threw some of them in there and then um, wrote a letter and stuff and uh, said sorry for the mess. You know, I did consider it, but, you know, <laughs> so <laughs> I love you. Sorry for the mess. <laughs> You know, especially, well, um, the little one, she's two-ish, you know, so it's like, well, they're good to go. She's got two older sisters to watch her, and they can all pick up the paper together, so, for their mom and dad, so it's like, yeah, sorry, guys, <laughs> you know. <laughs> oh, I looked outside one time, I heard a car pull up. And there was my adoptive dad giving my kid a Snickers bar right before lunch. I flipped out. It seemed so planned, you know. But um, I go, what the heck do you think you're doing? And then I just jumped to shit after that because he didn't seem to care, you know. But I used to watch my kids diet so bad that when somebody infracted upon that, I mean major infractions, I'm talking... If you can't take care of your own self, you, I don't want you taking care of my child. You know, that type of thing. So, anyway, really, really, I was pissed. Well, like, my kids didn't even have sugar when they were a year old. You know, I had somebody give my month-old baby, I turned around, she's cramming a sugar cookie in his face for him to lick. I'm like, what the fuck do you think you're doing? Basically, I didn't say that. But, um, yeah. Oh, that pissed me off. You know. And somebody else tried to give him honey. I said, I, um, that could cause his death. I said, I will fucking kill you. You know. Excuse my language. But, you know. Don't make light of, you know, it's like I try to tell people that I'm around that are narcissists too. Do not take lightly the care of an animal if you have infract upon that around me you're causing part of our lord part of the almighty to suffer and i don't take this shit lightly you know at all you know i don't care person could be like my worst enemy and if you're treating that person like shit i'm all over that situation you know it's like, I, I just can't help the way I am. I really just cannot. That's the way God made me. You know, somebody's got to do it, I guess. So there I am. You know. I think men are starting to stand up on that situation too. Because if they could see a woman just not give a shit. With that lethal manner, if that's what it took to stop the evil in this world. Then they're like, wow, if she can do it, so can I. Yeah, you can. You know, how to fight a demon, do whatever you got to do. You got to kick it in its head. There you go. Bring it on. You know. That's the way I'm made. I'm making no apologies. None. I'm sorry I went off. I really am to my regular subs. <laughs> my apologies, my sweet friends. Seriously, so I just had to let you know things that were on my mind. I think about, um, well, it depends on where you live. Like if um, the Mexican border was closed and we had less beef or whatever, it would matter what state you are in because we do have some cattle producing states that don't really ship a lot of them in, unless they're like um second uh best they will take to the stockyards and there they kick each other and they end up with broken legs and the meat is tough and that's what they sell to the public type of thing but if you live in uh beef producing areas and dairy like I do around here um, it's a little bit different story than living by the Mexican border where um, feed and water hay all that 
costs more to produce and get to those animals and they are more expensive. Even in Texas, it costs more for ranchers to raise um, even crops and cattle because they don't have the moisture um, and the green grass. Like um, they say it's high in nutrients. Well, yeah, but not like here, you know, not like, like Montana, North Dakota, um, Minnesota, even Wisconsin, up into Canada. Um, let's see, where else? Wyoming, Nebraska, um, even Utah. There's a lot of major beef producers, especially the Hereford Association. People I work for, I know personally, there the meat doesn't go anywhere. You know, it stays within pretty basically, you know, um, like Omaha steaks, you know, and that type of thing locally grown that, you know, so, but I mean the beef, we have a beef producer, um, right next door and another one across the river, um, about three city blocks, <laughs> you know, maybe two, you know, across the water. And then it opens up, it gets um, almost like bigger going into the lake. So it gets wider as it goes because um, it branches from our creek, branches into the lake or into a river coming out of the lake. So there's like our creek and that one merged together as one. And it's called whatever, it's called the Kagama Creek down there. But that isn't technically what it is coming out of our place. So. It's a different, different branch. So I call it Willow Creek and Doug calls it Rat Creek. So it's Willow, AKA Rat. Kind of like Doug Incognito, you know? <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Sometimes you just can't hide those lion eyes, you know? <laughs> Do they mean lion like roar or lying, <laughs> like deceiving, you know? Oh, that's another thing. I was thinking of the words nun, N-U-N, and nun, N-O-N-E. Um, because in the scriptures, when they're saying, and none shall help you, there is a nun of God. And then that would mean that none did help them. So, and none shall help. And another one is morning. Morning as in the day or morning as in morning of Christ within ourselves. So morning. A lot of them um, scriptures are talking about the morning star. That's the morning star. See, as Lucifer. And... Um, that says a lot. That really does. So those two things just right there. Oh, got another bit of news. I was listening. Now, I'm not going to say what news I saw it on because I don't recall. And I'm not going to say if it was a male or a female because it doesn't matter. Because one of these people killed their spouse and blamed it on THC gummy things you eat. So gummy food or, you know, them candy THC things I've never had, but um, people have told me about them that they've tried them. But I heard a spouse murdered their spouse and blamed it on the gummy marijuana. Unbelievable. What next, right? I think I'll have to um, type that in or get on Google and see what that was. Um, murder blames uh, gummy marijuana for spouse's death or whatever. I don't know what I'll say in there. I'll have to think, but that's, come on, really, really? No, I don't think. Way back when I made some marijuana brownies, actually more than once, about three times, I guess. 
one really turned out well. And I shouldn't have ate like a couple of great big ones too. Um, but I didn't get murderous from cooking marijuana and eating it. So uh, what are they trying to pull? You know, hmm. what next? You're going to tell me that I could get violent? I I'll tell you what, if they don't let me sit down and smoke a bowl someday in this country, being free, doing it wherever the flip I please, um, just being denied anything in my life that some human being thinks they can put over me, that does make me kind of murderous, come to think of it. So then they could say that if you don't have it, then that's how you get. And I'd say, because of the fact, the thought of it, that somebody would say no, and then could go drink a beer, which I don't approve. I don't like alcohol. I mean, I've had it. I had times in my life where I enjoyed it. I abused it. And um, I know full well that it's the most dangerous drug in the world because of the accessibility and because of the ramifications of it. And, uh, well, and they even say when it cooks, you know, that it, the alcohol cooks off. Well, then why, when you have something that you cooked with alcohol like that, do you feel a little bit of a headachy buzz of the alcohol, you know? So, um, yeah, anyway. I've been there. Like, I like beer brats. Um, they, and I do kind of feel the beer after I eat one. Well, I haven't drank for, um, even just a little bit it was about 10, 12 years ago with my oldest son and his wife. And we had pina coladas. And then about a half a beer in between there somewhere, a few years back, four or five years. So, um, and before that, it wasn't really much anyway. But although I did have my days, did have my times in my life. So, yeah. I might have told you about one time that I used to drink a lot of um, peppermint snaps. And my ex and I um, had this. Uh, it was like a penthouse of a friend of ours, but we had no furniture. It was a, what do they call them? Uh, oh, doggone it. Can't think of it. Uh, not a penthouse, but something else. There's another name for it. Uh, it, it might occur to me. We had no furniture, but I had a good stereo, and I worked at a car wash. And we'd come home, and we'd sit on the floor and pass the peppermint snaps back and forth and just start laughing and just kind of lay down and veg out. And I mean, we could keep clean and all that. You know, it was a nice, um, nice apartment, you know. The whole side of a building, the whole side of an old brownstone. Um, uh, God, what the heck? Oh, I just can't remember what they call it. Some, some lottie got term, but, and then I had the opportunity to rent it, but I wanted to go back out to Montana, so that's what we did. Yeah, that was kind of a good move. One of my favorite jobs working at the sawmill awaited me with that move, so it was a good move out of the city and um, out into the country in between two mountains in a valley and yeah until it closed i loved it there i did i didn't really like the attitude of um um most of the people there but on average people are the same wherever you go so there's the same amount of jerks everywhere kind of per capita so <laughs> you know that type of thing so Anyway, <laughs> so that's about what's going on today. Um, oh, yeah, it's kind of rainy out a little bit wet.
it's funny though i mean it's spring and the animals that are out in it even my horse and chicken they love it out there so it's warm to them you know so yeah <laughs> although the chicken was on the step talking to me <laughs> told her don't you poop on that step and she looked at me and I because she did last year and I told her naughty I mean you can tell any animal you know and they know by your thoughts and your tone of voice it's a double teaching gentle like that well I kind of do that with people too but um depending on what they've been through and uh the words that God tells me to say to that person in particular is what's going to hit home with them and I know I have that gift like that so you know yeah oh it was great um a friend of mine Elizabeth on uh, Facebook we've been friends for quite some time and uh, uh okay well anyway uh, she had a post that said I'm it was of a throat inflamed like with something around it and it was choking and it said I had I had to fight the urge to not say something smart assy and um or say some smart assy shit and up above it she wrote um uh something cupcakes L or something cupcakes and it was radical because yesterday there's a guy claiming to be God there's this person that person you know liars and weaklings and um so I felt like and I controlled the urge I felt like getting on there and saying you're a, all a bunch of lying cupcakes and um you're pissing me off and so I wrote that first I told um, this lady thank you and then I reposted it and said yesterday I resisted the urge not to do that and I said um, see how God takes care or see how God takes care of me um, I go so that's so there's that you know and it was just so perfect to tell all these cupcakes and whiners and liars and everything that my friend was thinking on the same wave, thinking people were cupcakes like that. You know, it's like, oh, it was so perfect, just perfect. <laughs> this was a girl that was given in the foster care to lady, um, younger lady that I've been talking to for a long time and she is so strong and so good and so beautiful um, I have some amazing friends that are really fighters like that you know well oh yeah she even had a stroke she's a younger woman raising two kids um, yeah she's been through some shit even more than that you know, but anyway, yeah, unbelievably tough and good, you know, so amazing. There are good people in the world. They say they're few and far between. Well, yes and no, you know, whatever beast we're feeding, right? <laughs> But the cupcakes are the ones that bother me the most. They're the ones that are the in-betweens. They're the, um, or the flat-out liars. Well, I guess lying bothers me worse than anything in the world. I detest a liar. You know. Can't help it. I know I've repeated it a gazillion times, but the way this world goes and every day you see all this crap out there and you're thinking, God, what is this? It's not welcome to the machine. I'm, I'm not welcoming myself here. Don't welcome me to this shit, you know? No way. I don't consent. <laughs> 
Nope. Never. I mean, it's like I told my oldest. You're going to get attacked anyway, so you might as well tell this bad shit. I'm going to kick you in your head, you evil piece of crap. You know, because they're still going to be evil. You know, and I'm still going to tell them I'll kick them in their head. Step up. You know, so can't help it. Won't help it. Don't want to help it. I won't. I won't back down from this crap. Yeah, maybe some days too. And I do. I give Facebook an awful lot of breaks, but there's somebody over there that God told me to go over and torture for him. And that's why. So that's why I'm, I sound a little radical because this person is um, kind of talking in a threatening manner. I mean, when you're God, yeah, but you don't threaten me because I take that not only as an insult, but I am directly combative to terroristic threats from anybody. You know what I mean? So it's like, no, I'm not going to stand by and watch this bully talk like that to everybody else. It's like um, Facebook has so many narcissists on there that want to bully people with their mouth, you know, and even get on there and do live streams. It's like, oh, yeah, right? Okay, here you go. And then God puts like the perfect meme through for me to repost and just say it short and sweet the way it needs to be said. Oh, that's what I mean. God takes care of me like that. Yeah, he does. It's amazing. <laughs> yeah, and obviously my friend too, because she was thinking cupcakes too. It's like, no, we don't just think cupcake and, and this person you've been talking to like on a daily basis for years is thinking cupcake. I mean, we don't think of cupcakes every day. She's more thinking about taking her sword out of her sheath for years she had a, a Muslim kebab or habib um, black cross like this with um, plated armor of silver and a long sword um, woman warrior on her page Muslim woman ninja badass you know <laughs> it's like okay I love this girl, <laughs> you know, yeah, and she actually even turned a Christian because of me, so because we found there was no difference, you know, we're like, yeah, we both love God, we know that, and that's the way it is, and she knew that I knew enough about her culture and um, religion that we came to the same conclusion that religions just the belief in the same person, no matter who you are, actually, technically. So, yeah. I guess Satanists are too, technically, because they don't realize that um, Satan is of God and they're not denying God anything. He's just playing with them, so. That's funny. And he does have a wonderful sense of humor. I know that for sure. I do love that meme about um, the guy having an Adam's apple caught in his throat because that's, um, yeah. Yeah. Because they're the one that took the bite. You know. <laughs> and it got caught there. And so that God, God's funny like Great. Do you ever have those moments where God makes your heart laugh when you're talking to him in this place we call Peniel? You know, um, in, in our temples, you know, walking with him like that. And um, 
then he tells you a joke of why you went through something after you had been boo-hooing about it forever. And when it came right down to it, you might not even remember the joke that he told you, but you might remember that it made you laugh. The feeling of something horrible that you went through, you actually laughed about later is what I mean. So, yeah, I've had a lot of those moments. It's like, um, so that's what I told my son. Everything will be okay, you know. I know I really, really understand, especially when you have a family and um, everybody in the world does not want Satan will work through them. Everybody ultimately ends up being a part of not wanting that family to be, you know, really. Everywhere along the line, everybody will give an infraction on that. So when you have to take that upon yourself to do the skate thing on that wave, <coughs> you have to remember that you only have a certain amount of those infractions on that wavelength. So, and I think there's a couple people, my sisters out there, I love you, that you caught that, you know. So, and me, if you watch this, so. But yeah. So actually, ultimately, everything's going to be okay. Um, but there is an awful lot of games being played out there, and I'm an enforcer. I'm not dealing with this crap. I'll tell these people who they are, whether they want to hear it or not. You know. So. See, there's this one person, too, on there. Kill everybody. Kill the elite. Kill them, kill them, kill them. I'm like, no. Um, I was on there about three years ago. The way I word it is, die if you deserve to you know and i was um you know or fucking die if you deserve to or something depending on the day you know <laughs> so <laughs> and this is because and i and i'm not making excuses i am telling you i have masons from all over the world following me i have well i used to have like 80 some or 60 some at one point, but people following me that I don't even know who they are. And um, then I have just as many like that um, about the same, well, I got, seems like I get um, friended. I have one waiting, I don't know. I used to look at them. Some days I get in my mood. If, and then if they get obnoxious, I do like a spring cleaning, you know, I'll warn them and then it's like, eh, you know. So that's how I deal with that because I don't really want or I just I, I just don't ignore them. I see their posts up and scroll through that shit, you know. But yeah. Yeah, but when I see people just saying, you know, you should all just die and there is no if you deserve to, you know, there's just or the world would be a better place if we just killed all the elite. It's like, come on, dude really um we do have prisons for you know the wrongdoers and that's our justice system that anybody would expect unless they have a uh if they're made military and there's a tribunal um you know whatever that takes that's a whole different story you know but uh so, yeah, I had to get on there and call them cupcakes and liars and shit. Because if you're going to sit behind a keyboard, come home from work at night and you cannot wait or even through the day, whatever, I guess this person works, but um, spends all day throwing out political insults and religious insults and... It's really not doing anything like that, you know. I told people, if you want a bigger voice, go get on YouTube, you know. Really, you want people to listen to you, show your face, say your name, 
and then people will be listening to you. You know, I told my friends on Facebook that too. You know, if you just have these little insignias, and some of them actually sent pictures through but kept their little insignia so I could see my friends. And if they didn't want me to, it's be like, you are not anybody if you can't show yourself, you know, less than, so that's a fact. Well, I've rambled on enough, everybody. I love you very much. Thank you for listening to me. Um, yeah, a lot of stuff is weird in the world. I guess that's basically it, but I'll never back down and, um, not on the demonic situation and the witchcraft that goes on towards um, unsuspecting and good people. I will not and I refuse to back down. And I know just how to battle these things. So everything will be all right. Okay, everybody. Peace and love from Pine City, Minnesota, USA. Have a good day or night wherever you're at.